let's take a look at how to subtract fractions with unlike denominators. They ask us to subtract one half minus one third. Okay, so when you're adding or subtracting fractions, you can only add or subtract them if they have the same denominator. Okay, now the reason for this is if you think about one half, let's say I take a, a rectangle here, that means I have one out of two sections. If you take one third, let's say I have the same rectangle, that means I have one out of three sections. So we don't want to add together sections that are different sized, right? We're slicing these up in different amounts, so it doesn't make sense to add them together that way. So we need the same denominator to say that we're slicing these up in the same way. Okay, so to find the common denominator, we want to find a number that both 2 and 3 go into. Or another way to say that is a number that has 2 and 3 as factors. So one way you can do that is you can simply multiply these two numbers together. 2 times 3, that gives us 6. Now you can see that that's going to work because 6 divided by 2 gives me 3, and 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. Since I multiplied them, I know they go um, 2 and 3 both go into 6. You also could list them out your factors. Another way to do this is you can count by 2s and count by 3s and look for the smallest number in each list. You can do that especially if you think that multiplying them together is going to give you a, a bigger number than necessary. But in here, it only gives us 6, which works out pretty nicely. So let's use that. Okay, and then we want to rewrite both of these fractions so that they are out of 6. Okay, well, to do that, you want to say how many times does 2 go into 6? Or what would I multiply 2 by to give me 6 as my answer? Well, 3 times 2 would give us 6. So I multiplied the bottom by 3 or made the bottom number 3 times bigger. So to keep my fraction equal, I have to do the exact same thing on the top, multiply by 3 to make the top number also 3 times bigger. So 1 times 3 would give me 3. Now, if you take a look at this, hopefully it makes sense that 1 out of 2 and 3 out of 6 would have the same meaning. Now, if you think of that little rectangle that I talked about before, remember we said 1 half would mean if I had two sections, I have one out of those two. So I'm going to shade in one of those two sections. Now, if you took the same exact rectangle and you spliced it up into six equal slices, Okay, I didn't draw this perfectly. They're not, they don't look perfectly evenly, but let's, let's say they are. Let's say I drew this a little better and they were perfectly even. Well, three out of those six sections is still half of that whole rectangle. So you can see that those two things have the same meaning. I'm just dividing it up a little bit into six slices instead of two. Okay, and then we wanna do the same thing here. One third, I wanna rewrite as something out of six. Okay, well, 3 goes into 6 two times, right? 3 times 2 would give us 6. So if I have to make the bottom number times 2 or twice as big, I need to do the same thing on the top and multiply by 2 or make the top number twice as big. So 1 times 2 gives me 2. An exact same thinking here that if I took that original rectangle that I had sliced into, and pretend this is the same size, my drawings aren't perfect. We're gonna pretend this is the same size rectangle as we had here. If I had one out of those three slices, well, if I took that same rectangle and sliced it up into six spaces, I would have two out of those six you can see would be the same amount of that rectangle as one out of the three, right? So we're just writing it in a different way. Okay, and now that they have the same denominators or the common denominator, meaning the same bottom number, that means that everything is out of six. So my answer is also gonna be out of six. That bottom number doesn't change. That's telling us how many slices we have. And I'm just going to subtract in the top or the numerator. So 3 minus 2 leaves me with 1. So I have 1 sixth. OK, 
8 subtract 3 fourths minus 1 half. Okay, well remember, before we can subtract, we need to come up with a common denominator. Okay, common means the same. Denominator means the bottom number of your fraction. So I want to write these two over the same bottom number. Now, if I wanted to, I could say 4 times 2 and make a denominator of 8, but I think I can use an even smaller number than that. Notice 2 goes into 4, so I can use a denominator of 4. Now, if you're wondering how can I find the smallest number to use, one way to do that is if you count by each of these numbers, like let's say I count by twos, right, two, four, six, eight, and so on, that's gonna show me all the numbers that are a multiple of two. If I count by this number, count by fours, four, eight, 12, and so on, that's gonna show me the numbers that are multiples of four. So one way you can find the smallest number that would be your common denominator. This would actually be, in math, we would call this the least common multiple, right? Multiples are numbers that you, multiples of two are like counting by twos. These would be the multiples of four, counting by four. Common means it's in both lists. So what number's in both lists? Well, notice four is in both lists, but so is eight. So the least common would be the smallest number in both lists. So that would be four. So you can always do that to come up with the smallest number that you could write as a common denominator. So in this case, the smallest or least common denominator would be four. Now notice the first fraction I don't need to change at all. It was already out of four, so it's still gonna be three out of four. The second fraction was a two on the bottom or denominator and I made it a four. So I doubled it or multiplied it by two right? Two times two gives me four. So I have to do the same thing and double or multiply the top by two. One times two gives me two. And when you're adding or subtracting with fractions, remember the bottom number doesn't change. This means three out of four minus two out of four. So my answer is still going to be out of a total of four. And we're just going to subtract on the top. So three minus two gives me one. So I'm left with one out of four or one fourth. Two thirds minus two fourths. Okay, well notice they do not have a common denominator because the bottom number is not the same. So the first thing I wanna do is rewrite a common denominator for three and four. Okay, so one way to come up with a common denominator, remember, is to multiply the two numbers together, three times four, and that would give me 12. So I know one way to do this is to write both of the numbers over 12. Now in this case, that would also be my least common denominator or my least common multiple, because if you counted by threes, right, three, six, nine, 12, and you counted by fours, four, eight, 12, 12 is the smallest number that's going to be in both lists, right? There's nothing smaller. Okay, and so you can always do that to check if you're not sure, or if you don't care if it's the smallest number, you can also simply multiply them together. All right, and then from here, we want to see how to change each of these fractions, each of these fractions, sorry, that's hard to say, to make them equivalent or the same value as what we already had. So in the bottom, I had a 3 and I made it a, four, a 12. So 12 is 4 times bigger, right? I would have to say 3 times 4 to give me 12. So if I multiplied the bottom number by 4, I would have to do the exact same thing and multiply the top number also by 4. So 2 times 4, that's going to give me 8. Okay, and then my second fraction was a 4, I made it a 12. Well, to get from 4 to 12, we would have had to multiply by 3, right? 4 times 3 gives me 12. So I have to do the exact same thing on the top. 2 times 3, that's going to give me 6. Okay, and now we're ready to subtract. Now remember, the bottom number does not change, right? This means 8 out of 12 minus 6 out of 12. So I know my answer is still going to be out of 12. 
and I'm gonna subtract the numerator or the top. I had eight parts minus six parts, that's gonna leave me with two parts out of 12, or two out of 12. Now you do wanna check and see if you can simplify, because in this case, I can actually simplify this fraction. Two out of 12, I can reduce it, because two goes into both numbers. So I can write two as two times one, and I can write 12 as two times six. So if I cancel out a factor of two on the top and the bottom, I can simplify or reduce my fraction to one over six, or one sixth. Okay, for this one, Notice I already have a common denominator, right? The denominator or the bottom of both fractions is already four. So that makes this problem a little easier because I don't need to rewrite them. I can simply subtract. I can say, okay, and I'm just gonna put my answer over here. If these were both out of four, my answer is also gonna be out of four. And then we subtract. I had three parts minus two parts. That's gonna leave me with one part out of four or one-fourth. 